Hey, how is everybody? Lou from RV Habit. Today is uh, the last step in video in my lithium RV battery upgrade series. I'll leave a link to the uh, playlist up here. It's uh, changing the batteries out, changing the charger converter, all that stuff. Um, but I never changed my battery isolation manager or BIM um, in the RV because I only upgraded to 200 amp hours of lithium and uh, from the research I've done it says that that shouldn't be a, a toll on your alternator it, it will not affect it um, but the problem I found is well let's go over what BIM is right so in common man, man's terms a BIM basically is a little switch that either opens and closes and basically it keeps both your chassis battery and your coach batteries charged at all times when you're plugged in. So if your chassis battery starts to run low, it'll, it'll sense that and send power to your chassis battery so it doesn't uh, um, deplete. So you'll always have battery power. So the problem I've had is because now I have a lithium charger converter and an old style BIM that doesn't differentiate between batteries, my chassis battery is staying charged at 14.2 volts, which is too high to maintain for a lead acid. So I'm going to install a lithium BIM, and the only one I found was from Precision Circuits, an LIBIM 225, and this is a pretty cool device. This senses that you have lithium in your coach and lead acid in your chassis, and it knows not to send uh, too much power to your lead acid, and it will also open and close so nothing overheats. Really, uh, if it works, and I'm sure it does because uh, this is this is what everybody's using, um, this should be a great addition to the RV. Now, a lot of people may have this style and be regular, and it'll be a direct swap out. I don't have this style uh, BIM. I have an old-fashioned circuit board and trombetta switch that's going to have to come out and then this is going to have to be mounted in that a small space. Uh, so I bought some one aught cable. I bought black and red because it was half the price of two red. Don't ask me why. It's, it's so stupid today. But uh, so I got black and red cables. Um, I got both of these on Amazon. I'll leave links below. I'll also put it on my blog article that I'll do with this. Um, it came with no directions. I went to the website, downloaded their directions, which is basically one cover sheet, and it doesn't really tell you much more than what you could read on the front of this. It tells you, you know, your battery uh, connection, your chassis connection, uh, your ground, your ignition. So I've never done this before. It doesn't seem hard. The hardest part is going to try and make this all fit in the space it is uh, that's uh, there that I have. So let's go out to the RV and take a look. So what you're looking for in your RV is a panel that kind of looks like this. Mine is in my stairwell up into the coach and it's just a a uh, small plate and your BIM will be located behind this and we'll take this off. But the first thing we want to do is disconnect your power from the pedestal and disconnect your batteries. You want no power going to any of this. And we'll take this cover off. And here is my BIM and some fuses. Now, as you can see, my BIM is this square Board. I don't know if you can see it back here. It's in the back and it operates this trombetta switch with either which either opens and closes depending on what needs power, your chassis or your coach. I need to remove all this and then try and make the new one fit. Now, you can notice that it's got some hard connections to this trombetta switch which will not be compatible with the new switch. So I have to take all this off. That's why I bought the uh, battery cables and we'll try and make this work. So the first step is to uh, take all this apart, uh, get it clean, and then I could work. Now just before I do that I just want to explain the wires. There's all wires connected to this trombetta switch. Most of them come from the uh, BIM. The only one I'm going to be worried about is this red wire here. It's the ignition wire. It goes from the circuit board to the BIM. And then this brown wire, which I have a uh, bypass switch underneath the front seat of the coach. So if the battery is dead, I can open that switch. And it tells this switch to open manually. 
to take power from the uh, coach batteries and send it to the chassis so I can start it. Those are the only two wires I'm going to be concerned with. Uh, but let's start taking this apart. This is going to be a little tough to uh, film because it's really, really tight here. But uh, let's see. And it's just slow going. It's just kind of tight in here. I can't get really too many types of wrenches in here. So we'll just work on this and we'll be back. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That was, uh, that was a bear to get off. These posts go through to the other side. You gotta get a bolt on the other side. They're all corroded. Anyway, I loosened them enough to get this off and you can take a look at this. So, this white wire is the ground wire. We're going to need that. So I'm going to take that off. This orange wire, this black wire, and this purple wire all go to the BIM that I'm replacing. So they're all going to come off. And I got to take this wire off. This, this brown wire you see, you may or may not have that. Again, that's an emergency start switch that I have. And I'll show you where that goes on the new one. But let me continue getting all these wires off. And then I'll bring you back. So I've got the BIM off of the RV. And as you can see, this brown wire, like I said, goes to the uh, emergency start switch. I'll put that right there. And the only wire that connects from the RV to this BIM is this red wire. And this is the ignition wire. And it's just a, a spade bit. And I know it's the ignition wire because if I look at the schematic on the back of this cover plate, it says J11 red, J11 red BIM ignition. So I know this wire goes to the ignition on the new uh, progressive uh, precision circuits BIM. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, this thing has fought me the entire time. I, I would be lying if I said this was easy. This was really tough. This, there is not a lot of space in here and I'm struggling to get where these wires are gonna be able to connect here. I had to get a couple bolts for to connect them here. I thought I was gonna be able to take these bolts out but there's literally like three nuts there's a nut here there's a nut on the other side there's wires and another nut so these are just too difficult to get out so I'm gonna attach them to these braces that are here and see if I can get the wires to bend that way uh, once I get the wires to bend that way and connect it I'll uh, bring you back it's gonna be a struggle okay this is where I am guys uh, I have the BIM mounted it was very difficult. There's just no room in there, and it doesn't sit anywhere. That was the only spot I could get it to sit. Uh, I have the red double out cable connected to the battery coach terminal on the BIM, to the battery coach terminal on the RV, and then I have the black wire connected to the battery chassis on the BIM, to the battery chassis on the RV. So the big connections are done. I got them in there. I had to go get some bolts to do this this is not how i planned on doing it i thought i was going to use be able to use the bolts in the back i can't so there's three wires left and it's that like i said this is not difficult wiring um it's difficult job though i mean i'm i'm uh getting beat up here i guess so you have three small uh connections here one says signal one says ground and the other says ignition so signal is going to be this brown wire that goes to my uh, emergency start switch uh, in the front of the RV. The white wire is going to go to the ground. And this red wire that I took off the BIM that I've confirmed through the schematic is the ignition wire. I'm going to have to cut this spade off. I'm going to put a ring terminal on it and connect it here. So let me get going on that. 
So I'm all done connecting everything. I have my signal wire connected that goes to the emergency switch. I got my ground. And the only thing I really had to do, this red wire that's connected to this board that was plugged into the BIM is the ignition wire. It had a spade bit on it. I had to put a, uh, a, a circle bit on it to uh, attach there. So that's all the connections. Uh, take this as uh, how I do it, not how you do it, because every rig's gonna be different. Uh, the wiring on my rig did not seem too difficult, except it, it's tough. You gotta work in this little box and try and make everything fit. Uh, I could have got away. It would have been easier with some softer, smaller cables, but I'm not so sure I could have used smaller cables. Uh, but now the next step is I'm gonna connect the, the coach batteries, uh, connect the uh, chassis battery back up, and see where we're at. So all done. I'm not gonna lie to you, it was a bear to get in there. It took me uh, over two hours. I'm covered in sweat. I had tools everywhere. Um, it was a chore to get it in there. Now the wiring was straightforward, very basic. You know, three, three uh, wires, the ignition wire, the ground wire, and the signal wire for the, my emergency start switch. And then of course the battery chassis and the RV chassis. But again, wiring, super simple. Modifying it to get in there, super difficult. Uh, if you have the newer style that's that shape, should be a direct drop-in so not a big deal but if you're going to take this on know that you're going to be out here for a while and it's not going to be a, a walk in the park i connected all the batteries i checked everything everything seems to be working fine uh, my emergency switch works correctly i started the rv and the alternator um th this uh switched over and when it switches much louder than the older one you know it switches you can hear uh, a hard clunk um, and then the alternator started charging the RV batteries. Now remember, if you're taking multimeter readings, everything is on a timer on this. So it will only charge from the alternator for 15 minutes and it will uh, close again to let the alternator rest. And vice versa, this will only charge the chassis battery when it needs it. And at that point, it'll only charge in an hour. There's a whole bunch of times. I'm gonna leave it in a PDF form. I'm gonna do a blog article on my website. So I'll leave that time sheet on uh, my website. And I'll also leave the spec sheet and the install sheet all there on the blog article if you have any other questions. Uh, but as always, thanks for uh, watching and I'll see you soon.